Fluttermane, and for Abdullah, we will be seeing Lilligant and Torkoal. Uh, we've seen this duel once or twice before, I guess on both sides of the field. Yes, absolutely, right? And having the sun up from this Torkoal actually really helping the Pokemon on Ryan's side. Yeah, I guess the, uh, you know, the unfortunate part of Torkoal, you know, there's so many Pokemon with that ability in this format where you're always going to be uh, doing some good and some bad, but uh, we can expect the Lilligan to be the quickest Pokemon in the field with this uh, Chlorophyll ability, so, you know, threatening the potential of both an After You Eruption or a Sleep Powder. Uh, always the tricky part of playing against that duo is that uh, a number of bad things could potentially happen to you at any given time. Yeah, lots of lots of different options, right? I think, I think Lilligan is still going to be the fastest thing on the field no matter what happens, unless something like a Tailwind gets set up with the Iron Bundle with a booster energy, which is not exactly something that's going to happen this turn. So Lilligan is probably feeling about as comfortable as it could. Torkoal protecting this turn. Its eruption is based on its HP, so it wants to stay as healthy as possible for as long as possible. Lilligan's Leaf Storm, ton of damage into the Great Tusk, brings it down to that Focus Sash this turn as well. Yeah, potentially a big uh, move there, you know, a number of Pokemon that could easily tap that uh, remaining HP and, uh, ooh, great protect there. Yeah, huge protect, that Shadow Ball targeting down into the Torkoal, just trying to get rid of some of that HP. Earthquake is the move of choice as well from this Great Tusk, will not hit into the Torkoal, will hit into the Lilligan and into the partner Fluttermane here. Fluttermane takes a lot of damage from that, actually. Yeah, that's scary. So I guess we kind of saw the, the, what I was thinking in reverse there, where it was Ryan was the one who was kind of like tap, trying to tap the uh, Focus Sash in order to put it in range of attack but now uh, and after you eruption would be devastating here both these Pokemon would be easily knocked out yeah great tusk protecting this turn this is truly Lilligan's uh, perfect moment of the after you eruption that we've seen for so so long does allow this Torkoal to move much much faster taking that very kind offer eruption will definitely be able to handle this flutter main it will not get that last remaining piece of HP on the great tusk yet but you could still maybe protect through it and get some more damage off next turn if that's your per if that's the thought you're thinking of flutter main currently knocked out Ryan and now has to bring in something else to see what he can do to deal with this. Yeah, I mean, just barely enough there. The uh, full HP, sunny <laughs> eruption on the mostly knocked out Flutter main. Uh, got it. Uh, but yeah, so we saw Arcanine coming in here. You know, crucially, a fire type resist, and uh, it's going to need to do some work in this matchup. Yeah, Arcanine is really interesting, right? Because you could go for a couple of snarls, but then you're not getting the damage output. You still have to deal with something like another after you, eru you know, an eruption again, which, is, which still probably feels like a really great thing. Because if you get this Great Tusk off the field as well, you've already also gotten rid of that Flutter main. You get to just do a lot of damage and then maybe you have something in the back to handle this Arcanine but the after you eruption combination once again here from Abdullah brings the Arcanine down to almost half and it does somehow manage to scrape that last one HP off of the Great Tusk. Barely getting that one. Yeah the Flare Blitz here from the Arcanine into that Lilligan easily enough to knock out here but this Torkoal is still untouched. Yeah and nice to get a knockout at least you know uh, no longer have the threat of that scary very fast sleep powder or the after you um, but yeah, there's a whole bunch of resources traded. You see Arcanine activating its own Citrus Berry. Uh, there's definitely some potential that that matters, um, yeah. you know, because it was so low otherwise, you know, uh, it could have been much more easily knocked out. Although, uh, if we see both the Pokemon on the other side of the field, uh, I think both capable of knocking out Arcanine from its current uh, amount of hit points, regardless of whether or not it had consumed that Citrus Berry. Yeah, I think for Ryan, right, you have to wonder what that last Pokemon in the back would end up being, and that's probably going to change things a little bit, depending on what's back there. The Fluttermane, though, for Abdullah does get sent out its Iron Bundle there for Ryan. Definitely did not bring that Corviknight, which makes quite a lot of sense because that after your eruption is just such a strong game one opportunity. Yeah, so at least, uh, you know, they're threatening a little more damage, but uh, this is a strange spot, right? So Snarl uh, would be a problem for both of these special attacking Pokemon. You know, Iron Bundle threatening speed control and some damage, but uh, this is another one, right, where we've seen how quickly some of these games have gone. Uh, being down a Pokemon against the uh, uh, Abdullah, you know, uh, his team could just dish out so much damage, right? Uh, and if you try to focus one of them down, the rest of them can kind of just pile on. Uh, I think this is a really tough spot for Ryan to not just get blown out here. Yeah, actually a terrestrialization right out of the gate on the start of this turn here for Ryan into that Arcanine. Arcanine will be terrestrializing into the water terra typing, which is definitely a great way to help deal with something like that Torkoal right there. You then also have the opportunity to try and just maybe handle a couple of these attacks a little bit better, but Abdullah also going to be matching a terrestrialization here, the terrestrialization onto the Torkoal itself, and it terrestrializes into the fire type. It is holding the charcoal and it has the sun up, very similar to the way that 
Palafin loves to run with its own Terrastalization and uh, move boosting item. Hydro Pump from the Iron Bundle, though, looks like it misses on the Torkoal, so that is still going to have so much HP. Fluttermane's Moonblast into the Iron Bundle is enough for that knockout as well. Iron Bundle not able to do exactly what it wanted to in that turn, meaning this Arcanine's Flare Blitz will not have the extra boost of the damage that it may have wanted to earlier. Does do a little bit of chunk there, but we know how much that this did last time with a standard typing here on the Arcanine. It will probably still bring it down into the red. Actually, it's enough to still get the knockout there thanks to the Terra typing. Yeah, well, you see the, boop, the bonus there. Uh, the Hydro Pump miss, you know, allowing that knockout to occur, though it's hard to imagine anyway. Arcanine could have dug out of that one, and we see a very impressive game one there as Abdullah gets a game away from becoming a regional champion. What a run he has been on. I still think that that after you eruption, we have talked about that as a lead for at least eight years, I think, right? Probably a really, really long time. It's just such a classic. There is so much that Abdullah has for it. Ryan now needs to bring something that I think will help a little bit more. Already seeing exactly where that lead kind of may have struggled. I think King Gambit, Flying Terra King Gambit could be a, a healthier opportunity, maybe some sucker punches to get some damage. Yeah, maybe we saw a very uh, special attack focused uh, a roster there, so yeah, maybe you know that, that is the Pokemon holding the assault vest in Ryan's side. I have to say, I'm out on the Lilligant early. Looks like it's Fluttermane and Great Tusk, though. This turn for Ryan, Lilligant and Torkoal once again for Abdullah. So threatening a bunch of damage, at least. I think both sides uh, potentially can pick up a bunch of knockouts on this turn. But, you know, uh, the priority kind of goes again to Abdullah, right? You know, the advantage of uh, Chlorophyll is that uh, Lilligant gets to decide the way that this turn goes. Yeah, Lilligant, we saw it. It was a Protect on Torkoal and a Leaf Storm into Great Tusk. Brock procced the Focus Sash. The uh, eruption on the second turn ended up doing so much damage to knock out that Fluttermane and, you know, handle that Great Tusk as well. And I could definitely see that happening exactly the same way this turn, depending on if there's a Terrastalization or not. But it looks like that's exactly exactly what Abdullah is going to go for. Once again, getting that Terra Fire type onto that Torkoal. It's holding the Charcoal. It has the Drought up. It's going to now have a times two to all of its Fire type attacks. Torkoal has never looked more offensive than it has in this format in years of it being VGC viable. After you, once again, from the Lilligant, the very first thing to move on the field. Torkoal not having to worry about any Protects on the other side. Eruption going off will bring this Great Tusk down to its Focus Sash and should take up this knockout onto the Flutter Main as well. And already Abdullah off to a very offensive start. Yeah, we see a critical hit there, which I'm assuming uh, not even close to mattering. And well, this is a, a great start. Yeah, really, really strong start here, Abdullah. You have to wonder, this Earthquake into both of these Pokemon. Torkoal actually gets brought down really, really low here, but you only have to do one HP. An Eruption is uh, your own HP based. I think you'd still bare minimum do one. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, what I love about that, though, I mean, that is a great response. I think the great thing about that uh, from you know, Ryan's side of the field is like you, you're kind of unavoidably going to take a lot of damage there, at least with Earthquake. Um, I think he, using that kind of a plus, he knew his teammate was going down, so he's not like he was surprised by anything there. He gets a ton of damage to his Torkoal, at least forcing it now to switch to Heat Wave, probably, which could miss and help him out, and also breaking the Focus Sash. Uh, I still don't love the spot for Ryan, but I think, you know, uh, from where he was, at least he got as much done as he could have. Yeah, a double protect here from Abdullah with both the Lilligant and the Torkoal this turn. A great time to kind of scout out, see what's going on. Great Tusk also going to be protecting here as well. Wants to hold on to that last piece of HP. It means that this Arcanine is going to be fully scouted out for whatever it wants to end up doing. Flare Blitz being that move of choice makes quite a lot of sense. That Lilligant is just such a problem. Yeah, I mean, it really makes a lot of sense on Abdullah's side of the field, though, right? Because, you know, if he can get rid of Great Tusk, you know, there's only two Pokemon remaining. The game gets much simpler, um, but you know, Ryan trying to preserve that 1 HP Great Tusk, you know, uh, its speed matters if it can keep it alive, but it fails to protect. Yeah, that double protect not going through a 1 in 3 chance. The after you once again from Torkoal, it's going to click Eruption again. It will do damage onto both of these Pokemon, probably far more minimal than we have seen earlier on in this tournament, but it's still enough to take out that Great Tusk. Arcanine now being one of the few remaining Pokemon on the team with whatever else Ryan has in the back to handle these Pokemon that Abdullah has. This Flare Blitz, though, will take out the Lilligant, but now you also have that recoil coil damage starting to stack up. Yeah, and it matters too, right? You know, Arcane Eye not going to have anything to switch out to for the rest of the game. It has to stay out in the field, and, you know, it can't really do significant damage without do dealing damage to itself. You know, Snarl, the only other true attacking move. Yeah, and Snarl looks like a great move into a Pokemon like Fluttermane, but at this point, if you're Ryan, you got to put on a lot of pressure right now. Iron Bundle is a great way to do that, especially if you can maybe try and time out the sun, especially, or force Ryan to maybe, uh, Abdullah to maybe switch around. Yeah, and we do still have a game here. You know, uh, Torkoal now no longer with the help from Lilligan actually uh, has to deal with the consequences of being one of the slower Pokemon in the format. 
Uh, but uh, you know, it's tough just to ignore a Flutter main, right? Where uh, Torkoal, if it's able to get a Heat Wave off here, we do some pretty incredible damage. You know, an Earth Power and RK9 would be de devastating. So uh, it's a very delicate turn for Ryan. You know, he can't really afford to lose another damage trade or his tournament's going to be over. So absolutely critical turn for him here to get right. Yeah, it is not over yet, right? There is still a lot of opportunity here for Ryan, but this is the most critical turn of this finals for him at the moment. Going to have to make a huge play here, starting with the Terrastalization. If it is the Terrastalization there onto the Iron Bundle, it is going to be Ghost. Instead, it is onto the Arcanine, the Water, which we saw last game. Definitely was pretty helpful, I think, especially with dealing with some of that damage and will allow maybe for a little bit of a better opportunity in the future. But Iron Bundle just clicking Protect this turn. You have to just stall out this sun in the sky at the moment. Moonblast from the Flutter Main, though, into the Arcanine. It's enough to get the knockout, and that means right now that it is Iron Bundle against the world here for Ryan's hopes. It's not going to matter what Torkoal does here. Uh the protecting Iron Bundle, but uh, what a great read there, right? Uh, actually, the Terrestrialization wound up uh, hurting RK9 instead of helping it, uh, removing its own resistance to Fairy-type attacks and allowing that Moonblast to pick up a knockout. Yeah, that is the end there. That actually means that Abdullah is your Vancouver 2023 Regional Champion. Once again, back-to-back -back regionals with players that have entered for the very first time. What an incredible run. You know, I think every game we saw him play uh, several matches throughout the tournament, he was just perfect every time. Uh, it doesn't look like a player at his first tournament, right? A really impressive, uh, like probably one of the most impressive regional runs I can remember seeing. Uh, I, I just, yeah, I really enjoyed watching him play all weekend. One of the most interesting players that I think I've been able to watch, especially just so much talent and a lot of knowledge about the team that he's using. Wasn't even a team that he built himself, you know? It's a team that he borrowed from Nick Navar, maybe changed up a couple of things, but, you know, awesome to still see. Great for this regional championship to stay within the country of Canada as well. Awesome sportsmanship between both of those players, and they have both been a treat to have backstage as well. Definitely excited to be able to uh, get Abdullah back here for an interview. I'm sure that this kid has to have not imagined that's how his weekend would have gone. Yeah, I mean, what a dream, right? right? You, know, you come out here for your first event, go undefeated on day one, uh, you know, win a bunch of stream games, win the tournament. Yeah, I mean, easy, right? Yeah, that's uh, that's how you plan it up every time. You did talk about how just don't lose yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You He's the right. only one who followed the advice. Yeah, <laughs> that's why he won. Yeah, I guess so, right? But I mean, not only that, but incredible play from him this weekend. Definitely not something to be discounted. Also, incredible play from Ryan. And truly, every match that we put on stream today felt like a really, you know, it all felt technically perfect and that's one thing I love about day two Swiss is you get to just see more of these high caliber matches and it allows for this lead up into the top eight and it really was such a treat for us. Yeah I think this is a lot of like incredibly close matches uh, the last two you know really seeing players push the advantages they had in the team matchup right you know uh, and that's some of the sloppy play that we saw maybe back in January the players have really locked it down now you know, they understand how to press advantages of their teams uh, to me that was one of the things that was most impressive about Abdullah kind of just watching his play throughout the tournament I think it's actually almost more impressive because he did didn't create the core idea of his own team, right? Where you saw while he understood it, he played it very well in each matchup. Uh, he knew when to press the advantage with Oli and Torkoal. We also saw other sets where he just never brought them because he realized, you know, all right, they have a good enough matchup against this duo, but it's not to my advantage to try to play the game out this way. Um, I, I think if, you know, he like maybe lost game one more and then recovered in game two and three, like, oh, that was a good run, but like, I'm not as impressed. Uh, that he figured it out correctly the first time at such a high rate, I think is really impressive. You know, he actually quite a bit of margin for error in most of the sets that he won on stream. Yeah, I think uh, there was a, there was a he like you said, pushing the advantage is just such a great way to phrase it. Like he understood what his win conditions are. He understood what board state he wanted to be in at all times. And that is something that experienced players. I think it's something that really shows the mark of a true experienced player is keeping an eye on their board state and keeping an eye on what their end goals and usually what their win conditions are. And it's really cool to be able to see players also have that same it's the same awareness of how their game is going and just being so cognizant of exactly what's going to go on with their Pokemon and even with different matchups. I'm sure Corviknight was probably not something that was practiced as heavily against to say maybe something like a Dondozo matchup, but then you're still maybe paying attention to how it may have worked, especially with something like Alberto's team that was kind of running around between OCIC and now. Yeah, well, and that's one thing to keep in mind too, right? You only get to see a small fraction of right. all the matches that players played over the weekend, right? And like, uh, that's one of the reasons why, like I, I you know, I, I don't hold against the players kind of winning a little too convincingly when they have a good matchup, right? Like, as you know, throughout the course of the weekend, right, it wasn't always this easy. You know, I'm sure there's plenty of matchups that every player that we saw on stream played where, you know, the deck was really stacked against them. And, uh, you know, to have the record they put up, sometimes they won anyway, right? They figured it out. They knew their team well enough to uh, pull it off, kind of regardless of the disadvantages that they faced. Uh, I do think, like, with Abdul,
tool in particular too, um, one of the things that make Fulligan Torkoal so scary, you know, is you've got a bunch of different options that the same lead combination can do. Uh, but like, he hit at a very high rate on screen. You know, some of that was like kind of training his opponents, right? Uh, with this effectively being game three and game four of a set, um, it, he's already had his opponents see him do some certain things. Uh, you know, like, you know, we saw the protect in game one slash game three. Um, instead, you know, Torkoal just going straight for an attack and getting away with it in the uh, decisive game there, you know? I think kind of understanding how to uh, play a long series against an opponent like that and mix things up. Uh, it's very veteran play from a relatively inexperienced player. It's it's so and so incredible. And I mean, right now, both of those trainers are going to be leaving here with a couple more things than they showed up with in the form of medals and prizes and all sorts of really cool stuff. And that's got to be such a cool experience for both of them to have. Incredibly, incredibly well played. Enough listening to you and me, Scott. We have had a blast this weekend, though. We are going to toss it over to Gabby with your winner, Abdullah Moadeen. Thank you so much, Maeve. Abdullah, let me be the first person on the stream to congratulate you as the 2023 Vancouver Regional Champion. Uh, I hate to pull this quote out on you, but I believe you said on Saturday morning you would be happy to go 1-8, and here you are, the champion. How does it feel? It's just indescribable. I can't describe, I can't put it in words how happy I am. I just, it's, when people say everything I wanted, but more, this is, this is it. I mean, I could not have, I could not have guessed I'd make day two, and now I won. I just, I can't believe it. I, I can't. Well, take a moment to take it in because yeah. I know that this is a lot and there's bright lights and I'm sure the adrenaline is still pumping. Yeah. But, you know, once you do have a moment to breathe, I think that Lilligant and Torkoal was such a key combination in that matchup. I know that you played Brian and Swiss earlier on today. Was that your game plan in those games as well? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, one thing I know that Ryan has to do is he has to leverage around Arcanine a lot. It's the only thing I think on his team that resists eruption. So he has to play around Arcanine, and and yeah, I have a King Gambit, right? Terrify King Gambit. So if that gets a Defiant Boost, I win. If I get an eruption on, uh, a Russian off, and I get a KO, I win. If I get a sleep off, I win. And so I feel like that's just saying more about Ryan as a player, how well he played, for how bad the matchup was for him. It just I'm I'm so impressed that he got so close, and I'm I really I really want to give it to him first. Like he he played incredible. Yeah, I know. I as I was watching that match play out, I noticed that in earlier rounds we saw a lot of double steal from Ryan, and obviously Torkoal, especially yeah. with the Terrifier and the Charcoal and the Sunlight yeah. Boost, just loves to see two Steel type Pokemon exactly. on the opposing side of the field. Yeah. Um, when it came to this team, um, you know, what you mentioned that, you know, it was built by Nick Navarre, aka Nails, uh, who got top four in Knoxville with this team. Was it the Lilligant and Torkoal that initially sort of drew you to it, or was it something else? Yeah, it's a, it's a funny story. Um, my brother Calvin, Calvin Foster, he, uh, he introduced me to Sun. Oh, okay. Uh, and this is right before he went to his regional uh, up in Perth. Uh huh. So he introduced me, and I thought, uh, I haven't told him this yet, but I thought it was garbage. I. <laughs> Hated everything that had to do with it, so I, I just I couldn't I couldn't use it. And once I saw Nick use uh, Lilligant Torkoal, it something just struck. I love offensive teams. I said this, but it's just it's such an amazing team. And I feel like, like I'm surprised I didn't play Mirrors. Like how good that team is. It's just so uh, yeah. It was definitely Lilligant that that drew me to the team. Yeah, and it's very unique as well to have Lilligan instead of a Trick Room supporter. You know, I right. think a lot of times with Torkoal, we see it on the slower side, mm -hmm. we see it bulky, we see it with Armorusion and DD. But right. I think both your result today and Nick's result from Knoxville last week, and I think there were a couple Sun teams in Perth as well yes. that did well. Yes, Sun um, won as well. Yeah, yeah. It, exactly. it just goes to show you that it's a very powerful Pokemon. Yeah, I, I, I love Torkoal. And uh, I feel like the way Nick ran it, it's just ideal. Uh, I feel like a lot of people are running Helping Hand Overheat. Yes. I feel like the ability to just threaten Eruption, like the amount of times I didn't even click after you, and I didn't even lead Lilligan, and I clicked Eruption anyway, like it, it's so, so good. And uh, I t I t uh, the way I describe the team to my friends is it's a uh, Xerneas Groudon, and that's the way I described it because you lead Torkoal uh, Fluttermane, and now you're threatening Xerneas damage with uh, Fluttermane, who's like, the thing Oko's uh, Garganackle. It's just unbelievable. And then if you can get rid of my uh, Flutter main, now you have to deal with the full health uh, Torkoal. It's like an eruption anyway. So it's just, I, I, I really think the team carried me. 
For sure, for sure. And, uh, you know, shout outs to all you uh, Xerneas Groudon players out there. I'm sure they're out there somewhere yeah. waiting for that to come back. Uh, is there any advice you'd like to pass on to anybody who's also going to look to maybe trying this team out before at the next set of regional championships? Um, this might be an insult to Nick, but just don't use your brain. Just the, <laughs> just, just play the game. Like, I, I feel like that some matches I tried so hard and I lose, and then the next team I was like, okay, I'll lead Toko Lil again, and I'd win. So I feel like the team is just uh, uh, attack, attack, attack. It's just like, uh, you know, get the damage in. The, uh, the best defense is a good offense, exactly. for sure. And I think that Torkoal as well, you know, as someone who likes uh, side spam teams personally, sometimes the best move really is just that autopilot. You know, exactly. I'm just going to use eruption and my opponent's going to have to recognize it. Exactly. So. Very, very important strategy indeed. Uh, that all being said, any other shout outs? Anybody at home you'd like to say hello to as uh, you go and collect your uh, medal, you go and collect your prizes, all that good stuff? <laughs> I I really have to thank my parents. Like I how supportive they were. Um, it, you know, it's weird. Some uh, Someone who's never been to a regional, you tell them that I want to pay all this money to go to a regional, fly out, uh, you know, live there for a couple days. And and uh, and they were just so supportive about it. They, they didn't say no one time. They didn't think about it. They just said, we're getting you on that play and you're going to play. And I, I, I told them, I'm not going to win. Like, I, I kept telling them. You know what I told people? I, I said, um, they said, good luck winning. I said, uh, you're hopeful and I'm a realist. I'm not winning. And uh, I feel like it paid off. Yeah, I think so. And, you know, I would love to have your perspective on things because coming into a tournament being like, oh, you know, I'm going to be a realist about this and getting this result, that's uh, pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, Abdullah, thank you so much. Again, congratulations. I hope thank that you, you have the opportunity to 